October 10th already. Uh, elections will be here in, what do we say? It was four weeks from yesterday, right? Yeah, that's right. Wasn't that the deal, Lance? Yeah, that's right. So uh, we're talking to all the candidates. We've been talking about the issues, the statewide issues. An issue on the ballot in Yakima is, of course, uh, the Yakima downtown plaza. And, uh, you know, I don't know that we need to go into the whole history of it. Uh, we've certainly been talking it to, to death over the last few years. I think it's unfortunate that it finds itself on the ballot. But that's the way it is. That's the game everybody's got to play. So uh, our mission is to uh, have informed voters. There's an awful lot of uh, misinformation out there. There's a lot of deception, in my opinion. If somebody was uh, there on the ground floor. Yeah. Um, but we need reality, reality checks. We're hearing, we're hearing now about budgetary issues with the city and all of that factors in uh, when cost is part of the conversation. So we've got two folks that have been uh, sort of championing this along um, outside of government. Uh, and they are Bridget Russell and uh, Patrick Smith, and they're in the studio. Hi, gang. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Somebody else to talk about this besides me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that. All right. Well, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for, uh, to me, this is thanks for caring about your community and its future. I mean, it's plain and simple. That's what this plaza represents is, uh, is a grab. We're coming around on the old merry-go-round and there's a ring hanging there are we going to reach out and grab it or not and when you lean out it's scary and maybe you've never done that before uh and who knows what the ring's worth in the end but uh, that's the ride we're on so how would uh, how would you characterize uh, with uh, four weeks to go your sense of how this campaign is going and where people are at we're optimistic we're really optimistic um i think that you know patrick and i we've been as you said on this on this plaza ride for a while Right now, one of the things that's kind of, I think, fun for us is we get to educate a little bit more mm -hmm. um, because we haven't, we've not, you know, early on we were really talking with council about it because council had mm. all the information. Um, and now um, educating the public is something that we're really working on doing, which is one of the reasons we're here talking to you today. Sure. Um, but we've been, um, you know, we've been at the farmer's market. Patrick's been speaking with Rotary. Um, we've got a website, yesforyakma.com, where we're trying to make sure people are getting all the right information. And um, it's been great when people understand it and they listen. Most people understand why it's a good thing for Yakima. It's hard to believe that, that um, I guess maybe I've been at it too long and too close, but uh, th there is a jump you have to make from, oh, look, it's a park to, oh, look, it's an economic driver with millions of dollars in potential. How does this connect? How does it work? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I think it at its core, that's what attracted me to the project from the beginning was that it was uh, a, a good uh, project to drive economic development in Yakima for the long term. And um, I think making that connection for most people is what kind of turns the light on. And, you know, you don't have to walk very far from the plaza site to see a lot of underutilized properties and and think about the potential for those uh, if we've got more activity downtown, if we've got more people, uh, events and attractions and what all of that could be and what that could mean for Yakima and its future. And it's it's pretty exciting. Check out uh, yesforyakima.com. It's got a lot of information that uh, you uh, right there at your fingertips, uh, the why, the case studies, the parking concerns. You know, I got to ask you guys, um, are, are you confident that if we do get a yes vote, to the question, should the city of Yakima construct a community plaza on city parking lot number two directly west of the Capitol Theater? If there's a yes vote on that, are you confident that the city council is going to go through? They said they would. We take them at their word. So uh, the, pretty much every single city council member said that if the vote went through, that they would stick to the vote. So that's what we're... I mean, going to be asking them to do. <laughs> I, mean, I just asked that because, you know, that's what they, they've said a lot of things in the past as well. And I know, but I guess, you know, what are we supposed to do? But yeah, well, all right. All right. Uh, uh, do, do you do you expect a, a large majority? I mean, are you are you confident in that point? Or are you just in, in terms of the yes vote on this? Um, we, you know, 
that's a that's like looking into a crystal ball. <laughs> yeah. We hope for a majority. We um, we're pretty excited about what people are saying when they um, when when we get to talk with them. Um, so yeah, we would love a great majority. Um, that would be fantastic. You've got a, a commercial out. Do you have a commercial? Did I we see do. A TV commercial just recently. We do. We actually just launched it yesterday. So oh. yeah. So look for it online. Look for it on television. Um, we're also going to be doing, uh, of course, some ads in the in the paper. Um, and we have flyers. Um, we'll do some radio. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're definitely trying to make sure that people are listening to the, kind of the narrative of the plaza. It's not just about a parking lot versus a park. You know, as Patrick said, this is really the only thing the city has in its plan right now to drive revenue. Right. Everything else is a revenue drain. So if we long term want our city to be on better financial footing, this is the only thing that will get us there. That's one of the things we've noticed. We had city budget conversations yesterday, and they're talking about how tight the budget is, and the next conversation is going to be revenue. And um, clearly, the, the whole idea of revitalizing downtown mm -hmm. was to come up with some sort of um, plan that would would revitalize business, bring more business in, generate more business uh, in the open spaces and uh, underutilized spaces that mm -hmm. we have in a couple block area around that location. So from an educational point of view, what are the biggest misconceptions? We've got thousands of people listening right now. So what would you want them to know um, right now that might change their mind based on what you've heard from folks so far? I mean, the, the first thing that I would point to is um, so much of the development that has already happened downtown happened after the plaza plans had been put into place and, and the ball got rolling. And I look at uh, most of that development that's happened downtown as kind of the early adopters. These are the people that said, hey, I want to be in on this at the ground floor and make sure that I've got my business close to the plaza um, you know, before the plaza even gets built, you look at uh, Crafted Restaurant, Single Hill Brewing, uh, both those, uh, the ownership groups of both of those companies cite the plaza as part of the reason why they wanted to locate downtown. Um, the so, remake of the Nordstrom's building, they mentioned that uh, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Monty Titan Hotel is another one. Um, you know, there. so there's a lot of excitement uh, from developers and from employers about uh, locating downtown and the plazas is a major reason for that and when you know the two major sources of city revenue are property taxes and sales taxes and of course there's you know only two ways to increase uh, government revenue and that's either increase the rate or increase the base and nobody wants to increase tax rates uh, that's painful for everybody but if we can have more development downtown, that means more property taxes. If we get more economic activity downtown, instead of pushing it all to Union Gap, that's sales tax revenue for the city of Yakima that then can go to fund basic services, police, fire, you know, streets and sidewalks, things like that, that, that I think we all, mm -hmm. we all want out of our city. But, uh, but if the money's not there, right. where, you know, do you do? where do you get it? Yakima is uh, uh, basically a fair-minded uh, place. I think people appreciate fairness here. Um, and one of the arguments against the plaza is that it's an unfair use of that based on its historical um, use. And people that were involved in uh, helping to develop what is city property, I want to make that point very clear, it is city property, and that's one of the reasons that's the location, because that cuts costs from having to buy uh, property way down when the original decisions were made. Uh, so how do we address that, uh, the legality of changing the use and, and that sort of thing? Because I think that does weigh on some people's minds. Sure. And um, it, the construction of that lot and operation of that lot you know, historically had been paid for uh, by LID and PBIA assessments. Uh, those assessments disappeared 10 years ago. Um, surrounding business owners and property owners haven't paid a dime for the operations or maintenance of that lot in over a decade. Um, the operations and maintenance of that lot and all other city parking lots right now is taxpayer funded. That just comes right out of the general fund. Um, you know, one thing that we've been talking about um, internally is that, you know, free parking doesn't pay for itself. And uh, the operations and maintenance for those parking lots have to come from somewhere. And um, as far as the fair use of that property, um, the important thing uh, to remember is, is that it is city property. 
the city can do with its property what it wishes to do. And the property owners and business owners that once paid for that lot haven't paid anything for 10 years. And so in in my opinion, uh, there's there's really no question as to who can say what can be done with that property right. because well, it's it's city. It's one of the things that uh, some of the council maintain is that, uh, you know, it's city property and as conditions on the ground change and things change over time, uh, the city, in order to uh, best serve and best utilize its resources, uh, reserves the right to, to change things. We One of the reasons they're looking at uh, budget issues now is because we changed the charter to set $2 million aside off the top for road maintenance and that's you know that's putting a crunch on the current budget but that was a change to do that to address that particular need um they could turn around and change that uh that that's a, that that's one of the important things i think everybody needs to know it's not a lockdown situation uh you're managing resources and you know if it's a cow herd when that pasture is eaten down you move the cows over to the next one mm -hmm. you manage you manage your resources and 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 with nothing else in the pipeline as you say for an economic driver uh, one use of, re of resource for the community uh, could be that. How about um, how about the, the the ongoing maintenance? You know, what I, I tell everybody that I talk to about this, Bridget, is that you know it's got to be programmed properly. In my research, talking to other communities with, with uh, plazas and how many days a, a week and uh, every weekend and several days a week that there's stuff going on. You go to those communities and they say, man, there's always something going on in this town, sure. and that's cool and that's yeah. what you want. So, uh, but that comes at, at a price. Too. Too, and they've been saying, "Oh, we can't afford. It's going to cost two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars, or whatever it is, to to operate this thing." Um, sure. What's what's the pro groups take on all of that? Well, so th those numbers that they're citing, they're forgetting to cite the numbers that show how much the plaza is going to bring in just initially, and those numbers show that the plaza will bring in more than the maintenance costs. So the plaza is basically generating more than it's going to cost. So. The events that will be in the plaza, initially we've already got like 100 events for the first year already slated. So that's going to be much more money that's being brought in by the plaza than what it costs to maintain. So the plaza offsets itself just by the money that will be coming in. So when the, when the opposition says it's going to cost X, Y, Z, they're forgetting to say it's actually going to bring in two to three times as much. Yeah, so ABC. this is a benefit for us. This is why we say it's the only revenue generator that they have on their plans. One of the p communities that I talked to, uh, they put a, f a five year um, business tax on to pay for their plazas operations. And within three years, they took it off. It was more than paying for itself. Yep. And um, they had extra money coming in for those two years that they used for other things in downtown. And then that thing went away. So right. uh, that's never part of the conversation. Yeah, right. right. And full disclosure, or both uh, Bridget and I sit on the on the Capitol Theater Committee board, and um, you know the Capitol Theater itself is a city-owned property. Um, the Capitol Theater at one point was up for a public vote and <laughs> would have failed, um, and fortunately there were people with foresight to save it. And now it's one of the great cultural uh, cornerstones of our community. Um, but you look at the Capitol Theater and how it's funded, and you have uh, you know hundreds of donors and businesses that support the Capitol Theater and its operations, and we would expect to see ongoing support from the generosity of the donors that have that have stepped forward to build the plaza. Um, and then above and beyond that, if the plaza does have the economic impact that w we believe that it will and that other communities similar to Yakima have experienced, the property and sales tax revenues will be a huge improvement to the Certainly. city budget and so if all you're looking at is the cost of operating it and you conveniently ignore the property taxes the sales taxes the sponsorships from donors and businesses and events and things like that well of course it's going to look rather one-sided but if you put it all together i think it it makes all the sense in the world financially for the city to pursue something like this and i think what you mentioned about some of the other communities that have have built plazas when you look at medford oregon um places like that that are very similar to yakima they cite their plaza as one of the best things their community has ever done. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that we, you know, we're looking at the experts who have come to our town and said, 
This is how you develop an economic engine. You look to your heart first. That's our downtown. That's where we start. And this is what's going to help us to get away from where we are right now with our city's financial woes. This is this is going to be the first step in it. And so I mean, that's why I think that we initially got excited about this this plan. And and you as being on city council at the time, you got to go tour around to these places and right. you saw what a difference it made in their communities. Yeah, they all say I, we can't imagine our town without having done this. And, yeah. and they all also say we had major pushback and a fight on our hands yep. uh, to, to get people to accept a good idea because yep. it's new and it's different. Right. So, yep. um, OK, Lance, anything mm. that you want? Well, I'm, I'm just wondering, is the biggest concern for people still parking? I think that that's that's that, what that we've heard. Be, yeah. It's important for people to know that that 54 spots will be on the, the plaza right. itself that's and they right. will be covered um, when it's not the farmer's market. That will be where people can park. And um, it, uh, the surrounding area has been, um, you know, there I think what, like over 500 spaces right near it within the block. So. Not all parking spots will be gone, uh, you know, and on top of that, Yakima has abundant parking. It may not feel like it when you're circling around that lot. If that's all you do to look for parking. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you go to the one yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you go one block away, there's yeah. plenty. You, and went to, you went to the Fresh Hop. And I, I parked in front of the Cameo at Fresh Hop Ale Fest. Right. I got there at 730. Right. So, I mean... <laughs> You know, yeah, half yeah. a block away from the festival. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I parked a block away as well. Um, I think one of the issues really is that we've done a poor job as a city of telling people where they can park. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. you don't know exactly where where's a lot that is right near here that I can go to. One of the cases is the county lot, um, which is open after hours. We parked there and we were one of three cars and that's a block away. It's right by Second Street, yeah. you know, right. on, on yeah. It's yeah. one of three cars. During with, when six thousand people were there for fresh hot, <laughs> probably the busiest day downtown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Means. Well, guys, we're going to run out of time here in a second. The bottom line is, uh, you will continue to uh, put out the message. Uh, if people have questions, what can they call you guys? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, I mean, do you want us to give up our numbers? Wh- right whatever now? you got <laughs> in the next twenty seconds. I mean, yes for Yakima dot com on our Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. Yes for Yakima uh, is on Facebook. Send us a message. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways to contact us. Please, uh, please contact us with any questions, and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. And- <laughs> yep.